Assalamu alaikum everyone. In this video lecture, we will be discussing paper 4 topical past papers of the chapter photosynthesis, which is a topic of A2 level biology 9700. Let's start 51 part A. Figure 7.1 is an outline diagram of the Calvin cycle, right? So in the figure 7.1, we can see the Calvin cycle. With reference to figure 7.1, name the stage of the Calvin cycle occurring at A. So guys, we can see that at stage A, RUBP or ribulose bisphosphate is combining with carbon dioxide. So stage A is carbon dioxide fixation because the combination of RUBP and carbon dioxide is known as carbon dioxide fixation. And carbon dioxide fixation creates GP. Right. Name the enzyme involved in the stage of the Calvin cycle occurring at A. So guys, the enzyme involved in carbon dioxide fixation is the Rubisco. Name two examples of substance C. So we can see over here that TP is being converted to hexose and hexose is converted into substance C. So we have to state two examples of the substance C, right? So as we know that hexose consists of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So substance C must also contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. And why is that so? Because we don't see addition of any iron. We cannot write substance C as amino acid or protein. We cannot write substance C as nucleotide or we cannot write substance C as chlorophyll because we don't see addition of any iron such as nitrate, magnesium or phosphate. So substance C should also contain the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And for that, substance C could be starch. Hexose can be converted to starch and stored. Substance C could be cellulose. Hexose can be converted to cellulose, which is used to make plant cell walls. Hexose can be converted to sucrose and translocated. Hexose can be converted to fatty acids and cholesterol in order to make lipids. The substance C could be starch and it could be cellulose because starch and cellulose, they both have chemical elements, same as that of the hexose that is carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. Name the biochemical process that produces Name the biochemical process that produces reduced NADP and ATP. So guys, in the Calvin cycle, we can see that reduced NADP and ATP are being used, right? So these uh, molecules, reduced NADP and ATP, these molecules, they come from the light dependent stage. And specifically, to be more precise, they are made during non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So if we have to name the biochemical process that produces reduced NADP and ATP, so that is non-cyclic photophosphorylation, which is a process that occurs during light dependent stage that produces both reduced NADP and ATP. With reference to figure 7.1, outline what is occurring at stage B of the Calvin cycle. So guys, we can see that at stage B, TP at stage B, TP is being converted to RUBP and this is called regeneration of RUBP, right? So we can write that at stage B, regeneration of RUBP occurs with the help of regeneration of RUBP occurs by the utilization of ATP, right? So always remember this point that regeneration of uh, RUBP requires ATP. So guys, we are done with the question. Uh, we will now move on to the next question. Let's discuss question number 50. 50 part A. Figure 7.1 is a transmission electron micrograph of a chloroplast. So over here we can see in the figure 7.1 that this is a photograph of a chloroplast taken from an electron microscope. So what do you think is A? Guys, A is the starch grain. And what about B? B is the stroma. 
of the chloroplast that is the ground substance and C is the granum which consists of thylakoids and thylakoid membranes. Many compounds and structures involved in photosynthesis are located in a chloroplast. Using the labels A, B or C, complete table 7.1 to show the location of four of these compounds or structures. You may use each of the letters A, B, C once, more than once or not at all. So we have to uh, state the locations of the compound or structure shown in table 7.1. So if we talk about ATP synthase, so guys, as you all know that ATP synthase is found in the thylakoid membranes, which are found in the granum. So ATP synthase is located at C. If we talk about Rubisco, Rubisco is an enzyme that takes part in the Calvin cycle and Calvin cycle occurs in the stroma. So Rubisco is found in stroma that is B. If we talk about starch grain, so guys, starch grain is A. And if we talk about the phospholipid bilayer, so phospholipid bilayer is the, uh, is the membrane and this could be the membrane of the thylakoid, right? So thylakoid membranes are found in the grana, that is C. So this will be C, B, A, C. Let's move on to the next part, part B. Elodia canadensis is an aquatic plant that lives submerged in fresh water. Equal sized plants of E. canadensis were exposed to different wavelengths of light for the same period of time. As each plant photosynthesized, the number of bubbles of oxygen leaving the plant was counted. For each wavelength, the rate of photo the rate of oxygen production was calculated the results are shown in table 7.2 describe and explain the results shown in figure 7.2 so guys what they have done is that they took many equal sized plants of the elodia right and they kept these plants at different wavelengths of light to study the effect of different wavelengths of light on the rate of photosynthesis and they measure the rate of photosynthesis by measuring the rate of oxygen production or we can say by measuring the number of bubbles of oxygen per minute right so we can see over here this graph is basically action spectrum why because uh, the rate of oxygen production is actually the rate of photosynthesis so whenever rate of photosynthesis is on the y-axis and different wavelengths of light are on the x-axis then the graph is known as what action spectrum so we need to um, describe and explain this graph so how do we describe this graph well we will describe this graph by mentioning the two peaks right so there's a peak at 450 nanometers of light and there's, there's another peak at 650 nanometers of light and the rate of photosynthesis is lowest at 545 nanometers. So in the description, we will write that rate of photosynthesis has two peaks, rate of photosynthesis has two peaks, one at 450 nanometers of wavelength and other one at 650 nanometers, right? Rate of photosynthesis is highest. Rate of photosynthesis is highest at which which wavelength 450 nanometers of wavelength and lowest at 545 nanometers of wavelength so guys this is the description now we will explain what we have written so what could be the possible explanation about this graph so we can say that maximum light absorbance occur at 450 nanometers of light and this light that is absorbed is used in the light dependent stage 
or photophosphorylation and as a result more photolysis occurs right and photolysis produces oxygen right so we can say that at 450 nanometers where rate of photosynthesis is the highest what we will simply write that at 450 nanometers most light absorbance occurs by the photosystems right this light energy is used in light dependent stage of photosynthesis so most photolysis occurs or we can say more photolysis occurs at 450 nanometers or we can say most photolysis occurs at 450 nanometers and most oxygen gas is produced hence the rate of oxygen production is highest at 450 nanometers right we can also say that the rate of oxygen production is least at 545 nanometers because because at this wavelength because at this wavelength least light is absorbed or we can say there is least absorbance there is least absorbance of light so we are done with this part let's move on to the next part chlorophyll b carotene and xanthophyll are known as accessory pigments describe the role of accessory pigments in the photosynthesis so guys you know the role of accessory pigments in the photosynthesis accessory pigments basically what they do accessory pigments absorb what accessory pigments absorb different wavelengths of light different wa different wavelengths of light and pass on the energy to what energy to the primary pigment that is chlorophyll a so the role of accessory pigments is to absorb different wavelengths of light and the energy that they have absorbed they will pass this energy to the primary pigment or chlorophyll a what is another role of uh, the accessory pigments this is one role that we have that i have stated this is the first role what is another role of the accessory pigments accessory pigments can absorb or we can say may absorb wavelengths that are not absorbed or that cannot be absorbed by the primary pigment so guys primary pigment cannot absorb all the wavelengths of light right some wavelengths cannot be absorbed by the primary pigment or chlorophyll a so those wavelengths which are not normally absorbed by the primary pigment or chlorophyll a will be absorbed by the accessory pigments right so we are done with this question now we will move on to the next question let's discuss question number 47 part a figure 7.1 outlines the process of non-cyclic photophosphorylation in the chloroplast of a leaf mesophyll cell state precisely where non-cyclic photophosphorylation occurs in the chloroplast so guys non-cyclic photophosphorylation is a chemical process that occurs during light dependent stage and the light dependent stage occurs in the 
thylakoid membranes. So we will write that the non-cyclic photophosphorylation occurs in the thylakoid membranes in the chloroplast. This is the precise location. Thylakoid membranes. With reference to figure 7.1, name processes A and B. So guys, we can see that in process A, water is splitting into oxygen gas, protons and electrons. So this process is known as photolysis, which results in the splitting of water using light energy, right? If we look at stage B or process B, so process B involves the formation of ATP. So electron carriers provide energy, right? And obviously this energy is used to pump protons from the stroma to the thylakoid space. And then, then these protons move down the concentration gradient and ATP are made by the process of chemi osmosis by ATP synthase. So process B, which forms ATP from the energy that comes from electron carriers, this process is actually known as chemi osmosis. Right. State what happens to the oxygen produced by the process A. So guys, oxygen is released as a waste product. Oxygen is released as a waste product or we can also say that this oxygen is used in respiration, aerobic respiration. Oxygen is released from the leaf or can be used or can be used in aerobic respiration or can be used in aerobic respiration right let's move on to the next part name the primary pigment in photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 so guys the primary pigment is the chlorophyll a Name two compounds shown in figure 7.1 that are used in the conversion of GP to TP in the Calvin cycle. So guys, for the conversion of GP to TP, ATP and reduced NADP are required. So GP to TP conversion occurs in the Calvin cycle, which requires the utilization of ATP and reduced NADP, which come from the light dependent stage. Let's move on to part B. Outline the uses of triose phosphate in the mesophyll cells of the leaf. Right. So guys, triose phosphate is made in the Calvin cycle in the mesophyll cells of the leaf. So what happens to this triose phosphate or how is this triose phosphate used? So guys, triose phosphate can be used in the regeneration of RUBP. Right. We can say used in the regeneration of RUBP and this TP. can be converted or we can say TP is converted to glucose or hexose, right? And then what happens to the hexose or glucose? The hexose is then used to create, is then used to create what? Starch, cellulose, sucrose, amino acids, etc. Right? So this is the, uh, this is the use of triose phosphate in the mesophyll cells. The, uh, this is the use of the triose phosphate in the mesophyll cells of the leaf. So guys, we are done with this question. We will now move on to the next question.